Grace and peace to you all, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for truly we serve an awesome God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just come to tell you thank you. Father, we thank you for another day. Father, we thank you for how you kept us. We thank you for how you protected us, oh God. Father, we thank you for your word on today, Father. We pray now, God, that your word will fall on good ground. We pray over each vessel, oh God, that they will be in position, oh God, to be doers of your word in the season and seasons to come, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for those, oh God, that's applying the word, oh God, for truly, Lord Jesus, there shall be results in their lives, oh God. We thank you now, Lord God, for loving us so much, oh God, to cause us, oh God, to obey thy voice, oh God, that we will reap in due season, oh God, if we faint not. So Father, we thank you, God, for all that you have done and that that you're about to do. I decree and declare over their lives right now that they will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work. Father, we'll forever give your name the glory. We'll forever give your name the honor and the praise. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Truly God, truly people of God, we thank God for another day. I want to encourage you in the word of God coming from the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read the 16th verse. And the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Let your light so shine. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is letting his people know, letting the people of God know we need to let our light shine. And our light shining is going to reflect the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to reflect him. And so he, he lets us know, you know, we got to, we, we got to let this light shine before men. We should not be acting like the world. We should not be conducting ourselves like the world. There should, there should be a difference. Hallelujah. And when there's a difference, when you're serving God uprightly, People are able to see that no, no, you, 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 you must serve the Lord. Why? Because of the, because of our attitude and the choices that we make in life. And then Jesus said, He said, so they can glorify your Father which is in heaven. When people see that you're enduring, when they see that you have patience, when they see that they know that you know that you've been done wrong or you've been talked about or whatever the situation may be. But Hallelujah! How many of you know that sometimes when you're talked about or you're lied on, how how do you conduct? yourself. Are you, rep are you representing the kingdom? Or are you representing this world? Hallelujah. Now, for instance, come on, let's just be real for a moment. If you knew that, if you knew that someone talked about you, or if you knew that somebody lied on you, whatever the case may be, now you have somebody coming to tell you and say, Hey, um, this person said this about you. Uh, that person said that about you. How are you conducting yourself? People of God, ask people of God, hallelujah. People may talk, people may say different things. People will do that, but we have to be that light that shine that even if somebody bring you something, you have to be the one in right standing with God and say, well, what they say, if it's a lie, then you say, yes, that's a lie. Now, if it's the truth, we say what's, what, what is true and what is a lie. However, if they lied on you and somebody came and told you, you don't sit there and gossip with the person who brought you the information. Hallelujah. About the one that said it. I don't care if they have proof because see, this is what Jesus Christ is saying. I need your light to shine. Hallelujah. Before men. Hallelujah. That they can glorify your father, which is in heaven. He said, now what you need to do if they brought you something. Hallelujah. And it could be true what they're saying. They could have evidence. They could have proof on what on what they're saying is true what somebody said about you then what you say is i don't know why that sister i don't know why that brother is is acting this way towards me i don't know what i've done against them but what i'm going to do i'm going to intercede i'm going to pray and then if god quicken you to go to that sister and that brother in love and say hey hallelujah uh, uh, is there some kind of alt against us now, I, I didn't say you can, you can go to everybody. You understand? You got to be led by God's spirit because there are some lies, remember, we say that you'll never be able to correct. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I'll fight for you. There are many battles that he will fight for you. But in this hour, he said, our light has to shine. There are different things that you're doing and your light is looking like the world instead of light, being the light for Jesus Christ. That's what he's calling his servants to be. He's calling us to be the light in this world. That they can see Jesus Christ. We don't conduct ourselves like the world, people of God. 
We came out of that lifestyle. And when you come out of that lifestyle, your lifestyle has changed. Hallelujah. Because you're submitting yourself to God. Why? Because we are supposed to be that light. That people can see Jesus Christ and honor him. And they desire the God that you're serving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we are that salt. Hallelujah. That when they come in conversation with you, that, 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 that the glory of God is upon you, that your conversation, my God, because you're operating like your father, Jesus Christ, that when they came in contact with Jesus, uh, his conversation made them at awe. And they had to say, my God, what manner of man is this uh, that speaks like this? Hallelujah. And if Jesus Christ is abiding in us, uh, then our conversation is going to be like the Father. Now watch this. He told us in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, the 21st verse. He said, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of man. Because sometimes we will say, huh, long as God is pleased, I don't care nothing about nobody else. Listen. Listen, and when God is pleased, that means that we're doing everything right even, even before man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're doing it right and we're doing it honest. Before God, then men, is they will see our good works. And they're going to glorify God by your good works, by the action that you take. There are some things that you got to say, even if the person is wrong, you say, it is well. Hallelujah. It is well. I don't hold them charged to it. And see, that's the glory of God that you are going to be that sign in the earth that people are going to be able to, they're going to look at you and they may say out of their mouth, honey, I couldn't, I couldn't take that. Honey, they couldn't say nothing else to me, but you said no, but the love of Christ, uh, my God told me to forgive and I got to forgive them even for what they have done. Hallelujah. That my father forgives me. So it puts you in a position that the light is going to shine in your life. Uh, that there are going to be many that's drawn to God. Uh, hallelujah. Because I'm walking like my father, Jesus Christ. That's why he said, let your light so shine. I want your light to shine. You said that you're a son of his. You said you're a daughter of his. He said, I want your light to shine in this dark world uh, that they can see me. Uh, you're not making excuses uh, about sin. Uh, you're not making excuses uh, when you fell from grace. Uh, you're owning up to your wrongdoing and your wrong mistakes. Uh, and you begin to say, you know what? Uh, I needed to be sanctified. I needed to be delivered. But I chose not to be delivered. I chose not my I got to give up my flesh uh, that the glory of God could reside in me. See, we got to be honest in this hour so we can be the light in this world. It's too many people making excuses on why I do what I do. And we love to say, well, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes, we have. But when are you going to get into a place uh, that you own up to your wrongdoings and say, I was wrong. Uh, I should not be a leader. Uh, I should not be a pastor. I should not be an evangelist. Uh, and I'm out here committing adultery. Uh, I'm out here committing fornication. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, because when you say that you are an example, Jesus Christ said to feed his sheep uh, and be that example in the earth uh, so they can see him. So they can see him and glorify him. Hallelujah. By you living holy. By you living righteous. By you conducting yourself as a man of God. By you conducting yourself as a woman of God. That they can see Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you're in this thing for real. Hallelujah. Because he said, I don't need you just to provide it before me. Because you got to do it before man too. So you got to know that man is looking at you. They're looking at how you carry yourself. There are people that will bring you information and they're looking on how you react when they bring you the information. They're looking at you. Are you going to act like the world? And now you're going to run them down. Now you're going to tell some of the secrets you know about them. That's not the character of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
If they came to you in confidence uh, and you went to them in confidence uh, and they told something of yours, uh, my God, my God, uh, you can speak honest things and say, well, they were wrong uh, to tell that. Uh, but don't you fall into the same snare, the snare that they're in. What you do is conduct yourself as a man of God, conduct yourself as a woman of God, and you begin to pray. You begin to pray for that individual because God is calling us to this place of holiness and righteousness that they can see the light, people of God. Because many people are saying, you begin to say, that's why I don't go to church, huh? because the church people are not real. And then we get upset. No, we got too many phonies huh? in the church. Come on. We don't have to be phony. Let's be real. Let's be real. And when we operate by the word of God, when he said, let your light shine, Who's that light? That light is Jesus Christ. When we allow Jesus Christ to abide in us, honey, when you in error, God going to tell you, he said, uh -uh, that's not the way I conduct myself. Huh? Who you representing? You're not representing the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because when you represent the kingdom, huh? Your, uh, your lifestyle is going to change. Huh? The way you think is going to change. Huh? The more you spend time with God, huh? my God, he's going to begin to change you of some things. Huh? My God, my God. Huh? And you begin to say, God, let me see them huh? through the eyes of you. Huh? My God, that God begin to change you huh? from the inside out. Huh? That you don't think the same. Huh? You don't talk the same no more. You know how you used to talk about people when they talk about you. All of us have done it. Hallelujah. We talked about them. If they talk about me, uh, you, you ready to talk back. But baby, huh, when you get washed huh, and you get cleansed, huh, for real, for real, huh, and you get in that secret place with God, your language starts changing. The way you look at things start changing. You're going to always tell the truth. But, everything, but there are some things that's going to change. Hallelujah. 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 The way you handle it. The way you handle things are begin to change. Say, no, I can't handle it like that anymore because the spirit of God is quickening me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because you thought, you thought the person, my God, that the enemy is using, you thought it was so against you. But God said, no, sweetie, it was to make you. Uh -uh. I, what I was trying to do, I'm trying to make you because see, I still see that you got some of that, some of that revenge back in you. I, I still see that you got that spirit of deceit in you. He said, so now that they rise up against you, I'm going to see how you conduct yourself. And when you find, and when you fall out of line with God, huh, and then God can minister to you and say, huh, that's not who I am. Huh? And then he began to tell you, I want that. Huh? And it's your job to say, well, God cleanse me. Huh? I don't want that in me. Because anytime you disappoint God, you sh it should hurt you. Anytime we, deport anytime we disappoint him, it should be some kind of conviction in you that you say, Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me. I want to do better. Because when you want to do better, you're going to strive to practice better. Hallelujah. Even that person that you're coming into the midst of and you know that they did you wrong. You know how sometimes in life that people can hurt you. And when you come into their presence, it's a certain feeling that you get. And you have to ask God, you say, God, deliver me from that. That when I come into their presence, that I display the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I display his love because he is love. Hallelujah. And when you ask God this, I promise you. It will happen for you. It would happen to you. It would, it would not be anything phony. Because you have allowed his spirit to abide in you. You have allowed the spirit of God to dwell. Because you want this thing for real. Hallelujah. I'm not looking to be an example like others. But I'm looking to be that example like Jesus Christ. That by the light that's shining in me, because he's the light, that they are going to glorify him. They are going to glorify him. They'll be able to look at your life and say, you know, I'm believing God to get to get to get to that place. Hallelujah. That I can love them with a genuine love. That I can forgive them and really forgive them for what they have done. Hallelujah. And begin to move forward. Hallelujah. Then as we go to the word of God. <clears throat> because he began to tell us we got to provide 
for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of man. You are representing, you are representing the kingdom of God. And when you represent his kingdom, we got to reflect his character. And so when you look at first Peter, the second chapter, <clears throat> the 12th verse, it say, having your conversation honest, your conversation got to be honest. Making sure that your conversation is true. Among the Gentiles, Gentiles. That's why when unbelievers are in your midst and you're confessing, excuse me, <clears throat> that you are a man of God and that you are a woman of God, your conversation should represent the kingdom. When people come to you for sound counseling, <coughs> excuse me, sound counseling, we shouldn't be giving them fleshly advice, but we give them what the word of God is saying. There are many times that you will come in conversation and you will tell people, say, honey, I know where you at. I used to be just like that. Oh yeah, I used to be just like that. But I'm gonna tell you that's the wrong way to handle it. I have to tell you the ways of righteousness. It's not that we sit on the other side and act like we never been through anything. No, I'm going to tell you, I, I used to act just like what you're trying to do. But I got to tell you the ways of righteousness. Let your light so shine. See, that's where your light got to shine at. When they come to you with certain things, you got to look for the better way out. Hallelujah. Whatever they may be going through, you got to say, well, let's, let, let's seek God on what you need to do. Because every time you're not going to have the answer. You're not going to have the answer for them. Something you got to go before the Lord and say, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's okay to let them know. I don't know what you should do. But I know one thing we can do. Let's go into prayer. And I'm going to believe that God is going to give you the right, the, the right answer. He's going to lead you the right way. See the light shining. That we go back to the Father about the situation. That our conversation is holy. Our conversation is righteous. That whatever people come to you, when you say that you are a woman of God, you say that you are a man of God, they come in to drink of that fountain that's supposed to be in you, which is the word of God, that I need help. Like I tell many, you got to be in right position to help people. There are some people that's going to come with you. Sometimes, no, a lot of times that people can't come and talk to anybody because you're not in the right spirit to handle on what they go say. There are many people that may come to you and they may tell you some issues that they're going through in their flesh. You are supposed to be that light that you can help them. And let them know my conversation is going to be honest to you. I'm going to let you know you're out of the will of God. That's not the will that God has for your life. So we're going to destroy the works of the devil that's operating in you. My conversation is going to be honest because I love the people of God. Because Jesus Christ loved me and he is love. And because you allow him to abide in you, that when you speak something, you speak it in love. When you see them going in the wrong direction, you begin to tell them you're going in the wrong direction. Not sit there and compromise because you know the sins that you've done. When you've done sin, all of us have done sin. But I'm, not, I'm no longer walking in that. So there's no way you're going to come to me and talk to me and still hold me in captivity. That is done with. And when you, and, and when you encounter those type of spirits, you just go ahead and dismiss them. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're not here to play. Hallelujah. So you still, your conversation has to be holy. Your conversation got to be honest. And the Bible says among the Gentiles, why? These are the unbelievers so they can see Jesus Christ. You got too many unbelievers that's round that's around so many believers and that's why they talk so boldly against the church and the church is the people of God because why they see so much um, they see so much uh, filthiness they see so much foul conversation that's coming out the that's coming out of the so-called believers mouth but Jesus said let your light so shine before men that by your good works 
that they're going to glorify him. He wants to be glorified. So the Bible says that where else, whereas they speak against you as evildoers, when you're doing the things righteousness, righteousness unto God, there are people that's going to speak and say that you are evildoer because you're coming against their sins. Because you're telling them that's not the way of God. That's not how God created you. That's not what God called you to be. God is not blessing that. And so they'll begin to call you an evildoer. But the Bible say, but see, that's why you got to stand still on my conversation being honest. My conversation still being true. I'm still going to say what the word of God said. And he said in his word that they may, that they may by your good works. Which they shall behold. See, that's the problem. We got to make sure that people are going to be able to behold your good works. That they may tell that lie, but the truth will conquer all that. Hallelujah. That he said, because he said that, they, that, that they, they may by your good works, which they shall. He said shall. Oh, they're going to behold it, baby. The more you stay in righteousness and holiness um, towards God, I don't care what the evil doers try to say about you. He said they, are, they shall behold. Hallelujah. Which they shall behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. All you got to do is live holy. All we got to do is live righteous. And they're going to behold. Come on. Huh? My God. They may call you an evildoer for a season. But my God. They're going to be able to recognize that glory. They're going to be able to recognize the spirit of God upon your life. Huh? My God. Hallelujah. And they're going to have to glorify God. But we got to make sure that we are in right standard with the word of God. Because we are in a crooked and perverse nation. So that's why our light got to shine. We got to make sure that everything that we're doing, that it is going to glorify God. Sometimes it takes us just taking a few, uh, just a few moments to think about things before you do it. Sometimes it takes you a few, uh, just a few minutes to, 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 to just think before you give an answer to certain situations. Give God time to speak. Give God time to tell you how you should, how, how you should handle this type, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> how you should handle <coughs> this situation. Give him time. <coughs> but a lot of times we get so eager to handle the situation that we don't take the time to get instructions from God. And so you don't know what that might have done. When you operate in your flesh. Now who's being glorified is the enemy. When Jesus said, I want your light to shine. I want your light to shine. By your good works. Your good conversations. You're going to glorify God. And let me tell you, just in case. <clears throat> you've already made mistakes and you already painted the wrong picture. Before people, get rid of pride and go back. Because, see, you know how sometimes we'll be on these jobs or, or different things and we get around with the group eating lunch and, you know, different conversations starts to go on. And so there are some things that said that, you know, we shouldn't really be talking about and so forth. And so now God is convicting you and said your conversation should have been holy. Um, your conversation should have been yay and nay. And so you catch yourself that you say, you know what, <clears throat> I, I was in that type of situation and, and, and so forth. And, and now you don't want to leave the, the group or you don't, you don't want to leave, you know, from, from, out of where they're at so they won't think that you're the one that's going to tell something or, or whatever that case may be. See, sometimes you, you got to get rid of pride and say, listen, y'all, you know what? I know I was a part of that conversation before and I was in error. I was wrong. You understand what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> I'm supposed to be the light in this world that y'all can see Jesus Christ in me. And so by me holding the conversation with y'all was the wrong thing for us to do. 
What I should have encouraged myself and say, hey, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray about the situation. Or I'm going to seek counseling about the situation. Sometimes you have to go back and get free. And say, yeah, that's how I used to do it. But I can't do it like that no more. Because I realize that <clears throat> the light is not shining. When my conversation is not honest. When my conversation is not right. When my conversation is not holy. What could be happening could be right. But we're going to ask God. You lead us and guide us, God, on what to do, on how to handle this situation. Because we are the light. And we can't continue to act like the world. But want people to respect us like we are the church when we're acting like the world. They can't respect you because they, they, all they see is you acting just like them. So it has to be a difference. That's why he said, <clears throat> your conversation, you know, it, it got to be honest among the Gentiles, those that don't believe that they can believe Jesus Christ by your conversation. <clears throat> that they'll glorify him. So when we look at the book of Philippians, the second chapter and the 15th verse. The Bible says, because, you know, he's calling us a holy conversation. I mean, um, honest conversation. And even when they speak against you as an evildoer, it's okay. Our conversation still got to be honest. 15 verses say that they may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. See, the Bible tells us we're in a crooked and a perverse nation. There are so many things that's not right. But he said, our light still got to shine. We got to be blameless. We can't be conducting ourselves like the world. And now we want them to honor who we are. We got to stand for righteousness no matter what. And we make sure that we are conducting ourselves as men and women of God everywhere we go. That the light of Jesus Christ is shining. That this, that the Bible said that by our good works, that's what Jesus Christ said. He said, let your light so shine. He said, by your good works. By you doing things honest. They are going to glorify him. Because you're not going to be, you're not going to compromise. Wrong is wrong, right is right. You can call me what you want to call me. Wrong is wrong, right is right. And that's what we have to say. Because he said, that, oh, that shall be whole. Because see, they'll start seeing the glory of God. Because why? You're doing according to what your father told you to do. And when we do it the way he said do it, there's no failing. He said they shall be whole. And they're going to glorify your father. It's time for Jesus Christ to be glorified. Hallelujah. By my good works. The person they used to know. You're no longer that person. They shouldn't tell you. You still act the same way. There should be some change about you. And that comes with maturity. We got to grow in the things of God. That I can let my light shine. Before men, there are many people that need to be delivered. There are many people that need to be set free. And they're looking for somebody who's going to represent the kingdom. That they can see. That they can say, whoo, I'm hungry now. I'm thirsty at the righteousness. Hallelujah. That they begin to hunger and thirst at the righteousness because they see that we are doing things according to the word of God. They'll be able to see the manifestation of God's glory operating in places that God said that, sh that he shall operate in. They'll begin to see the evidence. They're going to be able to see people be healed. They're going to be able to see people be delivered. 
Because that's what our father did. So he said, let your light so shine. We got to let our light shine. We got to let it shine. We got to quit justifying. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. When you go to the book of Esther, the first chapter. The king began to call his wife Vashti. And he sent his chamberlains to go and get her. And that's Esther, the first chapter. And when they went to get her for the king, she didn't come. And so when she didn't come, they, the men began to discuss this thing. And they began to say that she just didn't dishonor the king. But she dishonored all of us. Why? Because what they said was because if you don't do something, king, about her, your wife. Then all the other women are going to start disrespecting their husband. Why? They're looking at the queen as an example for the women. And here she's dishonoring her head. And so if something's not done, then they say all the other women are now going to dishonor their husband. We can't have that. See, that's why we have to stop it at whatever level it's at. That you got to realize that if you are an example to the kingdom, then we got to live up to the standards of the kingdom. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And so do you know what happened to Bati? She got replaced. Bati got replaced. The queen. Because they told the king, said, no, we can't have this. And see, that's, that's it with the body of Christ. We make so, much, so many excuses in leadership that these things are okay until you poison the body of Christ. There's no, they're, 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 we don't have no kind of standard anymore that you can go out here, you can commit adultery, you can commit fornication and stand in the pulpit and say that it's okay. It's not okay because that's why, my God, everything is being poisoned. So what people do, they look at Johnny did it, I can do it. Sally did it, I can do it. There is no consequences at all. At all. And so what happens is now the body is being contaminated because what they're doing, they're looking at their mistakes. Uh, and because nothing was done to them as far as man, because see, it's the difference between God. Then others look after that and they feel like they can do it. That's what happened in this book in As Esther. That's why his chamberlains told him. They said, no, no, king. We can't have this. We can't have her dishonoring you in front of all these people. Why? And especially in front of our wives. Because if you let her by with that, then surely our wives are going to dishonor us. And they weren't going to have that. A standard. A standard in the kingdom. So no, we're not going to have that. And she got replaced. And Esther was the one that ended up replacing her. Because she chose, she chose to dishonor. And see, people of God, we begin to dishonor God <clears throat> when we are in position and we are not letting our light shine. Many people are falling from grace. You know why? It's because they see the spirit there. They know that they are dealing with a spirit. And instead of them getting delivered, nobody don't know. See, that's the thing. You worry about man knowing, but did you ever take up the time and say, but God know. And he's the one that said, what's done in the dark? I'm getting ready to remove, un uncover so they can see. 
See, it's appointed time that God know how to reveal what you've been doing in the darkness. Get delivered. You know you battling with the spirit of adultery. You know you battling with the spirit of fornication. You know you're battling with the spirit of unnatural affection. You know it's present. What you need to do, get before the Lord and get delivered. You know you're battling with hate. You know you're battling with strife. You know you're battling with um, jealousy. You know you're battling with being a hypocrite. Get delivered. So your light can shine. You want to be used by God. That's a great thing. But let's get delivered of anything that's in us that's not like him. So our light can shine in this crooked and perverse nation. That we are representing the kingdom of heaven. That Jesus Christ looks at me and he can see himself. Let your light so shine. It's time out and it's been time out. That you tricking man. But God said, I see. I know your inner thoughts. I know the things that you're battling with. I know those filthy dreams that you're having from night to night. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he said, I know these things. And what he wants you to do, he wants you to offer it up to him, but you still holding on to it. See, that's why Paul began to say, I preach the gospel, but yet I be a castaway. Not so. Leaders. You are supposed to eat of this word. This word is supposed to become your lifestyle. That you get convicted. My God. And when you get in prayer and God said, go to this book. Uh, I want you to read this. Uh, and you begin to get convicted because now I see myself. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to get up like it ain't there. No, baby. I said, God, deliver me. Hallelujah. God, I want to be delivered. I see, God, that this foul spirit is in me. God, I got to be delivered. My God, it ain't good enough to fool men and women no more. I got to be delivered. So you won't get up and make excuses when you get caught. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won't make excuses because the excuse is you was, you, it was in you and you did not get delivered. That's, that, that's what it's not no excuse. You know it was in you. It just didn't happen. You premeditated on it. You thought on it. And then you planned it on out. You ain't just fell in the bed with them. Some things had to happen before then. And instead of you telling that devil, you's a liar. I will not fall out of grace. Because you know why? We got others examples that has done it. And it seemed like ain't nothing to happen to them. Because there's no standard. There's no standard of holiness. There's no standard of righteousness. But just the queen, the queen, because of the decision she made. And they say, man, that's going to affect the whole body. Ah, no, 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 no. Why? Because she is supposed to be an example. Just like we are. We are supposed to be an example of the body of Christ. When you say that I'm a believer, when you say I'm a child of God, hallelujah. We are supposed to be an example. Leaders, feed pastors, feed my sheep. Don't be Lord over them. Feed my sheep and I want you to be an example. Hallelujah. You be an example that they can see the light. By my good works, they are going to glorify our Father which is in heaven. By my good works. When Jesus called you and he chose you and you know that you had certain things that you was battling with, it's your job to get delivered. Quit worrying about what somebody else going to say and say, Lord, you know what? Uh -uh, God, I'm not ready. I thank God for the woman of God that was placed in my life. And when she spoke over my life, she told me, she told me what I was, what, what God, uh, what I would become. But she said, not now. She said, not now. She said, because if you get up right now, she said, you are going to fall 
flat on your face and you're going to be too embarrassed to get back up. I tell God, thank you. Because when I look back over my life and the things that I did fall into, I would have been embarrassed. You understand? But God knew the right time for me because he knew that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it for real. Or I'm going to sit down. I'm going to be honest. Or I have to sit down. Because when I say. That this is who God has appointed me to be. Then I look at myself. And I tell myself you won't fail. You will not fail. Because I know what it takes not to fail. What, is it, what does it take? It takes me being in the word of God. It takes the word of, word of, it takes the word of God abiding in me. I'm not just a quota. But I let that thing convict me. I let it, my God, marinate in me. I let it penetrate in me. I let the things that when he bring correction, it begin to correct me. Because an example is somebody that they can look at and pattern. That they can look at and know that we are doing according to the word of God. That it will no longer be many people saying, what are we going to church for? What are we going to the building for? They doing the same thing that people in the world do. That should not be. That should not be. Then we get angry with the world. The devil is a liar. We don't need to get angry with the world because the world telling the truth. They are telling the truth. No, we should get angry with ourselves and say we failed God. And we need to get back in right standard with God that our light can shine. And by our good works, that they would glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Be encouraged.